We left for the desert on Friday and it was such a beautiful day. We were so excited to get the Westie down to the desert because we'd never taken it there before and I realize I'm talking about our van like it's a person but this is our life now. Everything was going fine until a few seconds after I shot this clip. We ended up losing power and we didn't know why or what was going on. Our van does this to us sometimes but every time something like this happens we learn more about it so it's okay, but in the moment, it wasn't okay. This sucks. Turns out it was our distributor cap. It broke somehow, but by some act of God, we had a spare distributor cap in our back cabinet. So we were able to replace it with the help of our mechanic on the phone with us. And there happened to be an auto zone five miles away, so we drove over there to pick up an extra one just in case. On the road again, we made it to our campsite right at sunset. We stayed at the Desert Pension last year too. It's not pronounced Pensioni like I did last year in that video. It's called Pension, which means guest house. This place is so cool. All the structures are made from found materials. It's camping with just the right amount of comfort because there's a water tower with running water to wash your dishes, a little fire pit, picnic table, and then that little guest house that you can sleep in. And now there's a real bathroom too, which is a total game changer. It's a five minute drive from downtown, super close to the entrance of the park, and the owners, Jimbo and Cheryl, are rad local artists. You guys should totally stay there if you can. Get the little side clamps anywhere though? No, the clamps are part of the distributor. You have to buy a whole distributor for that. Nick, you gotta work your magic. What did you press to make it go on? We love being able to see bright stars at night when we're camping because it's so different from, you know, where we live normally. And this year we made it a point when we could to book our weekend trips on nights with a no moon or a very small moon so that even if we're close to a city like we were on this particular trip, we'd be able to see the stars really clearly. When I camp, I always food prep ahead of time. I cut up all of my vegetables and organize the cooler with lunch and dinner ingredients close to each other. And this helps me to just really be able to enjoy cooking without worrying so much about the mess or the cleanup. And it also means that we all eat faster, which is very important when you're camping. I didn't really show very much about what we eat on this trip, and that's honestly just because when it's time to eat, I'm usually so hungry and not thinking about recording it. But let me know if you guys would want to see a what I ate in a day or what we eat in a day when we're camping. We refuse the plastic hanger because it's not necessary, but we still have this plastic card. What are you going to take a picture of? There's a freaking Travco here. And I think, um, I think I Instagrammed this last time we were in Joshua Tree and it's crazy because we've only seen two Travcos in all of our channel our travels and they've all been in the same spot in Utah and in Joshua Tree. They don't move. And we should have known that before we bought a disgusting Travco. I was doing a little photo shoot with the amazing Naomi on Saturday, but we were meeting up later in the day, so we decided to check out a few things downtown while we had the time, starting with the Art Queen's Gallery. You can visit Sherry's studio and buy some of her pieces, which is really cool. And then there's also this little crochet museum on the property that's inside a mini 24-hour photo map booth. Sherry didn't make any of these crochet pieces, she's just collected them over time, and I think people might send them to her too, but it's a super fun little place to check out. We drove into the park around 3 for the photo shoot, and I was able to borrow some incredible vintage pieces from my friend Brooke of Carney Couture. And this navy chore coat and beautiful navy kimono were two of my favorite pieces that I borrowed from Brooke. I think they really worked well with the desert's color palette. On Sunday, we did a little bit more exploring in the park. Our camp hosts recommended that instead of driving through the closer Joshua Tree entrance, that we drive down to the 29 Palms entrance to get into the park. On Saturday, we had to wait in the line for close to 40 minutes, which was super annoying, especially in our van. And when we drove down to the 29 Palms entrance on Sunday, there was no waiting at all, so I highly recommend that. We parked under a tree near Skull Rock and had lunch, and then we crossed the street and started exploring. Allie, did you find yourself a new home? Yeah. Got 
tree right out front. Later, we drove down to the Hall of Horrors, which is an amazing name, right? And we found some other hikers that showed us how to climb up to the very top of one of the huge rock formations there. It was amazing and so scary, but so amazing, but, you know, scary. You made it to the top, Allie? That was incredible. And it was pretty, I mean, most of it was easy. It was just that little last part that I got pulled up on. <laughs> <laughs> so high up, Allie. Cool. Splash. <laughs> All right, Allie, whoa. You could totally set up camp up here if you were brave enough. After that, we drove down to the Choya Cactus Garden to see them light up at sunset, and then we stopped for one more bathroom break and photo op, and then we headed home. So that's what I did on my really quick weekend excursion to Joshua Tree a couple weeks ago. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit different than my traditional vlog style videos. But if you did like it, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to my channel if you haven't already or if you're not already. And thank you so much to those of you who are supporting me on Patreon. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.